Hello folks. So in this video, I'm going to cover uh, how to deploy or spin up a uh, Spark cluster on using Azure SG inside. So let's get started. Uh, again, click on uh, create a resource. And then type HT inside. Press enter. So basically what I'm going to do is here, uh, I'm going to spin up a Spark cluster and then after that we will be uh, running some Jupyter notebooks uh, to run some uh, PySpark related commands on it. Okay, so uh, you know PySpark we already know if we are familiar with uh, you know Spark and uh, we can basically build or run uh, you know any machine learning uh, stuff using Spark. So basically data scientists to use Spark to uh, build machine learning uh, models uh, and uh, you know basically for predictive analytics or any other machine learning stuff we can use the Spark uh, computing power. So basically Spark utilizes distributed computing to uh, you know perform these uh, machine learning activities or any other activity uh, using Spark. Okay. So let's go ahead, uh, click on HT Insight. And then click on Create. Once again, uh, you need to provide your cluster name. So let's say it's AZ. Um, is the, for example, Spark Lust, let us say. Okay, and what we can do is we can provide the, so let me configure here first. So let's select Spark Cluster in this case now. It will well, you know by default take linux operating system and the version here which we are using is spark 2.3 so click select and then provide the password new password here you can change the secure cell name here or you can keep the default one and we will use the same password as the cluster login password okay uh, resource group i'm going to use my existing one which is ml resources and the location this time i'm going to use is east us2 so click on next All right, so here we will create a storage account. Let me see. So first of all, so the Azure storage is the primary storage. I'm using my existing subscription. So that's why I've chosen this by default option. Otherwise, if I have another uh, subscription, I can use the access key option. I can either create a new storage account or I can create any you know existing account here. So let me create a new one here. So AG Spark Clust Storage. Okay, you can clearly see this message. The story account name must be within 324 characters in length and use numbers and lowercase letters only. So that's why it was giving me errors. So let me use Spark Just within lines here. Okay. And then 
choose the default values and click on next and here you can uh, validate your summary so whatever options we provide selected or provided we can see all those options here and you can see the estimated hourly cost for this case is 3.74 us dollars so again six nodes will be deployed two head and four worker nodes with 40 cores okay so let's click on create uh you can again see the message coming up in real time about this deployment and it will take approximately 20 minutes to deploy this uh, cluster okay so let's wait for some time and we'll, we'll come back once the cluster is uh, spark cluster is deployed okay folks uh, so looks like our uh, azure hd inside spark cluster is deployed now uh, you can see the message here so click on go to resources to access the uh, spark cluster dashboard okay you can see our azure spark cluster name here and all other details like cluster type see uh, url to access the same and you know the ml resources etc uh, so ml resource group i i was using my own uh, previous one ml resources so that's where it is showing so now let's click on Jupyter Notebook, okay? And when you click on Jupyter Notebook, let's see what happens. You will be asked to provide the username and password. So default username is admin and provide the password which you basically uh, supplied when creating this cluster, okay? So now uh, you can see the Jupyter Notebooks, right? So click on new and then click on PySpark. So you can very well see the Jupyter Notebook, Notebook opened here and you can supply whatever commands you want to and those commands will be run using Spark Cluster. So let's uh, since in the previous uh, video we uh, used Hive, so if you see this Hive, we ran few commands here, right? So we'll be utilizing the same commands only uh, to run here as well. So basically, you can uh, run the SQ commands in uh, Jupyter Notebook uh, because obviously SQL is most widely used for relational databases. So you can use that, and Hive basically stores the data in kind of a relational database structure. So when you uh, basically open the Jupyter Notebook uh, using Spark Cluster, then uh, you will be provided with one a preset called, uh, you know, um, a preset called uh, SQL context, right? So you can use that SQL context using percent percentage SQL, and then you can type your Hive command here. So for example, show tables, and that, that command will be associated with Hive okay and it will provide you the results so press shift enter and you can see that it is showing a message starting spark application all right so looks like uh, right now uh, the kernel is busy okay you can see the solid uh, here solid circle so it says the message kernel is busy so once the kernel completes its processing and it's uh, ready to use then this these commands will be run but since it is uh, itself is busy then it is taking some time so star means it is taking some time for processing th these particular commands so once uh, the kernel uh, comes out of this busy mode uh, these commands will be run the show table command and instead of solid circle it will show some uh, you know uh, uh, circle with boundaries okay so 
so you can see that uh, this is no more a solid circle here okay and you can see our command run right and let me run this command once again so it is encountering some error and it is saying that hmm so let me check let me check what is the issue okay guys so it looks like uh, the issue was uh, i actually suffixed this uh, semicolon so i was following the hive uh, you know standards and i provided semicolon which is not actually uh, uh, which is not required here so let's run this cell once again and you will be able to see the result so you can see that kernel is busy again perfect now you can see that the name of the table is provided here okay and let's run one more command on this table and as you remember uh, that this particular table is available in default database in hive also when we were checking so it was available in default database right so default so let's run uh, another query select star from and the name of the Okay, shift enter again. So every time you run these uh, SQL statement, you need to provide the uh, you know uh, SQL context pre preset in the form of percentage percentage SQL. Then it will be able to run your command. So you can see that the data is there, right? So there are 200 2,500 rows and 11 columns. So you can see that these columns are 11 in number and the rows are 2,000. 500 okay if we click on pi so scatter so these are some of the uh, ways you can basically uh, provide some plotting of data as well bar chart right so what So these are the, some of the ways you know you can basically uh, so you are you not only in the form of a table you can uh, plot certain chart uh, using these options on the Jupyter notebook itself so you can see the chart is plotted for a query time and client ID okay so you can see this so this is very useful okay so you can visualize the data as well for your data uh, provided right and you can save the data using uh, clicking on save uh, basically uh, not save the data in fact save the notebook uh, using download as okay option so no, you can download it in the form of notebook PySpark text format PDF etc so whatever you want and if you want to close and halt this uh, Jupyter notebook you can click on close and halt okay so it will be closed and stopped as well okay folks so guys this is it for this video i will be covering uh, next topics in the upcoming videos so keep on watching and if you like this video please hit like button and subscribe uh, on our channel as well thank you